So I was like, all day long, I'm gonna record a video. And then the universe was like, let's add rain. <laughs> let's add thunder. Let's add bugs in the shed. So, you know, if you hear background noise, it's the rain on the rooftop in this shed. Welcome back to my channel. This is awkward. Hi. I wanted to make this video as like an update for basically what you missed the entire time of me not posting. I have a list. My husband and I sat down and we made like a bullet point list of all of the things that we have endured from beginning of 2020 to now. So I wanted to share that with you. So 2020 COVID had happened and obviously we had planned prior to that. Um, Prior to knowing that that was going to happen, we planned to get out of Washington and move to our property in the northern mid Midwest area. So COVID kind of made us speed that process along because we didn't want to get stuck in a state. We didn't know if they were going to close down the borders. We didn't know. So we wanted to get out of Dodge ASAP. So that's what we did. We basically just packed up everything in a five by eight U-Haul, like the smallest U-Haul you can rent. Um, we seriously downsized everything which we had originally planned. We originally planned to sell everything, but <laughs> we basically had like a yard sale or, or an estate sale, I guess, and just let neighbors come over and kind of just pay us things for, for things that they wanted and basically gave a bunch of things away for free as well um, because there was like no thrift stores open at the time taking in donations. So we were basically just selling everything to neighbors and people that we knew. Our original plan also was to get a camper. We wanted to get a camper and we wanted to just lightly renovate it <laughs> from the inside and, and take that across the country. And that obviously didn't work out because when COVID hit, everybody, for some reason, everybody was buying campers up. So we really didn't have any options for campers. So that's why we went with the U-Haul option, packed up everything in the U-Haul and in the truck, took our dogs, and then we traveled across country. A week before that, before moving, we had traded our two luxury Mercedes vehicles in for an old Dodge Ram truck. That got us across country, but we just needed something to be able to pull the U-Haul. A truck is more practical in the woods and on dirt roads than two luxury low riding vehicles are. On the way to our destination, it was like the most, seriously, like such an adventure. And it was so eerie because the roads were so desolate. There was nobody on the roads, which I guess is a good thing, right? There was like no traffic. Um, except for some semi trucks and stuff, but it was really weird. It was just so weird because we've driven across country back and forth multiple times together and there was always traffic and always cars and it kind of just felt like we were in like a ghost town everywhere we went because everything was just so dead. Almost everything was closed so we had prepared a bunch of food to just take on the road. We put it in coolers so that all we would really have to stop for is the bathroom. Um, instead of having to stop for restaurants because nothing was open like i said except for fast food places which we're not a fan of it was super crazy the whole entire way across country as we were traveling in the northern states everything was just a blizzard and it was super snowy and icy and it was it made for me gripping my seat and praying a whole heck of a lot the entire way here thunder 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 the thunder is shaking the shed right now <laughs> when we got to montana we blew out a tire on the trailer on the freeway going probably 65 miles an hour and it was icy and it was crazy and we had to pull over on the side of the road real quick and it was on this super duper steep hill we had to call triple a to basically come out and rescue us put a new tire on the trailer and then go about our merry way but that was pretty scary we just avoided stopping to stay at hotels um we didn't want to take that chance so we basically just slept in the truck the whole way we put our sleeping bags out on the bench seat and we all snuggled up together and stayed warm. The dogs and, and us, um, the little dog jumped in the sleeping bag. We had a big dog sleeping underneath the sleeping bag on the floor. We had us just laying on the bench seat across just one big happy family, staying warm and let me tell you, true bonding experience really. So a lot of rest stops on the way here were closed due to COVID. So we didn't have the chance to be able to stop and go to a rest stop and chill in the parking lot for a few hours and sleep. Um, we didn't have the chance of going to a lot of restrooms at the rest stop, so we'd have to stop at gas stations. On rest stop, there was a guy that was um, in a full hazmat suit, the mask and gloves and everything, trying to go to the bathroom in the rest stop, which was, <laughs> it was a sight to see. When we finally got to our location, we wanted to drive by and see our property because 
we had originally bought property not seen we never saw it in person we literally just like blindly trusted our gut and took a leap of faith and bought the property so this was back in april of 2020 and there was still snow on the ground there was still about four feet of snow on the ground up here and we drove by and we were like oh man what do we get ourselves into we're on this dirt road we have this five vice eight u-haul trailer what are we doing so we tried to turn around in a neighbor's driveway we ended up getting stuck in his driveway way to meet your neighbors right so he had to come outside and of course beginning of covid everybody's like, like bah, stay away from me so you know he was like super duper freaked out that these strangers with washington plates um you know, are stuck in his driveway with a trailer behind them so he ended up having to help us back out put you know we had to put our truck in four wheel drive but he had to kind of guide us out otherwise we would have kind of went off into a little embankment so that was fun then anyways we drove we turned around and we drove down the state to my family's house about nine and a half hours away ish stayed there and started immediately looking for a trailer in the meantime so we ended up finding a 24 foot camper and it was not that much money i'll put the price here and <laughs> Woo! When I say it needs work, that baby needed work. Once we got the entire thing, we meaning my blessing of a husband, gutted the entire thing down to the frame, he had to rebuild everything back up. And that's where we came in together and we were like, okay, here's the design we're going to do to try and make this as spacious as we possibly can. Because let me tell you, it's not like one of those fancy campers where the sides pop out and the bathroom is huge and there's like a whole another level with headspace above your bed. No, no, no. It's like a typical little camper where you have like no walls except for the bathroom wall and that's it. In the time of him remodeling, we figured, you know, we're on a farm with my family. They have the space. They, they offered to allow us to use some of their space to start raising our own farm animals so that we don't have to start from scratch when we get up to our property eventually. So we went to Tractor Supply and we bought some baby chicks and we took them home and we started raising them. Then we ended up getting more a few weeks later and started raising those as well. We also raised some meat birds. So basically our, our original plan was to find a camper and remodel it a little bit like I had said earlier. But that didn't happen in Washington and then it didn't happen in Michigan either because same thing, everybody was buying them up and they were, people were just asking way too much money for campers. So we just figured we like experience we like challenge let's gut a camper so that's what we did and so one month of you know our original like one month we're gonna be here and we're gonna and we're gonna go turned into about five months not our original plan but it's okay because it was a good bonding experience for me and my family this is family that i hadn't seen in a while hadn't talked to in a while so i was able to build a relationship mend some broken things and basically just bond with them around july we wanted to come back up to our property just to take a kind of a a break from my family's house and take a break from the camper work so we came up with a tent and we camped out in the woods for a few nights we roughed it and it was really it was a really nice experience honestly and it made me really excited to come out to the property but when i looked around i realized oh my goodness do we have our work cut out for us because this property is not, it, it wasn't like a well on it with a septic tank and electricity and all that. It was like literally just woods that we've had to just do everything from the ground up. We've had to cut down the trees and clear the land ourselves and level things and pay for things and put in a culvert and all that stuff. Like that's all stuff that we've had to do. So it really like when we came up here last July, we were like, whew, this is going to be a lot of work but it'll be worth it because again, we like experience and we just like to challenge ourselves and sometimes picking th to do things the hard way teaches you to appreciate things when things are easier. October came around and we finished the camper enough to be able to move it up to our property. It's a fifth wheel hitch. So we paid a transfer company to transfer it up north for us. And we did that a few days after we had come up. We, so we drove up here a few days before the camper was delivered. On the way up here, um, we, we had a trailer behind us that my husband had bought, just like a little trailer to put stuff in. And then we had like the bed of the truck and the back of the truck full. So we filled everything up end to end and we also filled up a bunch of stuff in the camper 
or when the transport company came, they would be able to transport a bunch of stuff inside of our camper so that we didn't have to make too many trips back down to my parents to be able to pick all that stuff up. But anyways, we crossed through a light and all of a sudden something on our truck stops working and our truck dies on the side of the road in this little no-name town where we barely have signal. So we have enough signal to call a tow company. We call the tow company. Tow company comes out and tows us gives us a ride in the side of the tow truck cab. The tow truck has to take us to this creepy motel to stay for the night till my husband can get the part from the auto store, which happened to be a quarter mile walk down the road from the hotel. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise, but the hotel was creepy nonetheless. Thank God my husband is good with cars because he was able to fix it right away the next morning, get back on the road and come back to our property. So we set up a tent for a few nights on our property, waiting for our camper to arrive we had to basically drive through this ditch to get to the little makeshift driveway of mud and we got stuck about three or four times thank god for learning skills of living in muddy michigan i learned lots of tricks of how to create traction with tree branches and cat litter um one thing we had was an abundance of tree branches all around us However, we were super duper deep in a rut to where we needed something with traction and the only thing we had was a giant bag of dog food that we had just bought for our dogs, obviously. We laid it in the rutted out tire tracks. We drove across it and dog food basically got us out of the mud. <laughs> you want a picture of you? Okay, say cheese. <laughs> okay, we're stuck. Very stuck. Again. Okay, and all we have is dog food to try and get unstuck. So let's see if this works. Okay, go. Okay, go. <laughs> of course, of course, they don't see our struggle. You guys didn't see the struggle. The actual struggle. They missed the entire struggle. I know. <laughs> you got the easy part. All right. Then, literally the night before our camper comes up here, our tent floods out. Bad thunderstorms. Super bad thunderstorms. Kind of like right now, like, but worse. Way worse. Like, tons of rain, just downpour, and all of a sudden we're like sitting in our tent and the tent is just filling up with water and we realized <laughs> we realized that we, it was because we were on we were down a slope on a slight little hill and all the rainwater was just coming down this hill and leaking into this little pinhole on the bottom of the tent that we didn't know we had until it started raining with that rain happening that forced us to sleep in the truck for the night and then you know the next morning we try to turn around and we realize we're stuck in the mud again so Again, thank goodness for more dog food. But those moments of getting stuck in things made us realize that we were not going to get our camper back there without a proper driveway. Also getting stuck in the mud that many times back there with our tent made us also realize that um, because we couldn't get our camper back there with a proper driveway, we would need to park it at a campground and stay at the campground until we finished what we needed to finish so that we could actually pull the thing into the driveway properly. So that's what we did is we stayed at a campground that was on an Indian reservation and it was actually such a beautiful campground and we had like the most beautiful spot ever. But let me tell you about this delivery. When we get our trailer and we're like, why is the back end look all ripped up like that? Delivery truck guy says, Hey, we're driving up here and the tire blew out and we only had one spare for the fifth wheel so we had to replace it with that and then we got pulled over by cops. <gasps> it was like a whole journey for my transport company. So then he tells us, Yeah, the, we had to drive through this tornado. The tornado basically ripped off the seams off the back of our camper. Go figure, right? So then we look around the campground and we notice that the outhouse that's like in front of the section where we were camping is like totally tipped over. And then one of the camper campground neighbors comes over and introduces themselves to us and they're like, yeah, so a tornado ripped through here last night and the wind was blowing. And it, like where the campground was and where we chose to park was like right on the water. And if you're familiar with living on the water or near the water, 
you know that it just it gets a little windier up around the water really windy around the water <laughs> we knew that we were going to end up being at this campground for several weeks so we had paid in advance to stay there we stayed there for about i want to say we were there for a good month while waiting for permits to happen for the culverts and waiting for my husband to do the culverts we had to sit at this campground but like i said it was beautiful and we would go there to sleep at night and we would go to our property all day and barbecue and we would do the culvert and dig things out and cut trees down to clear land for sheds and things like that that we wanted to set up. The downfall of the campground due to COVID was that there was no shower house open. And the way our plumbing is set up in our camper, um, plumbing free um, setup. So the way it works is we use eco-friendly soaps and stuff to go down the drain for our bath and for our kitchen sink and stuff like that. It goes right into the ground. And then our toilet is a compost toilet. So we didn't have the option of hooking anything up to water because of the way everything was, we had set everything up so eco-friendly inside. So we didn't have a way to shower at the campground. So we had to go to Walmart. And we had to buy a, a pop-up shower camper thing. And we had to shower in that with a instant propane heater. And it worked great, honestly. The only complaints I have is that the temperature outside was 40 and 50 degrees. So it wasn't really like the most enjoyable outdoor shower. Now with it being like in the 80s and 90s up here, it would be so nice to shower outside. But then it was not pleasant. It was cold. It was refreshing, <laughs> but it was it was um, not pleasant to get out of. So then we finally finished our culvert and we wanted to test it with the truck. So I'm like rooting for him. I'm like, all right, come on, drive across, drive across. <laughs> we get this whole thing on video. He drives across and he gets stuck again. Okay, here's the driveway before. And now he's gonna roll over it and we're gonna hope that this doesn't go bad on camera. All right. <gasps> no! <laughs> no! dog food except this time the neighbor's dog down the road the, another neighbor um, we have few neighbors on this road but one of the neighbors has a dog and the dog smelled the uh, dog food runs down the road sits in the middle of the road and then runs and just runs around on our property eating dog food and that's how we met our other neighbor <laughs> like, so anyways we finally complete the driveway and you got to give my husband credit he did the entire thing by hand without machinery we wanted to save as much money as possible. We didn't want to rent machinery. We didn't want to rent a company to do it for us. We wanted to do it all by ourselves. And it was pretty impressive when we finally got it and finally like nailed the, the technique for properly compressing everything down. It felt good. It felt it was a really good accomplishment. And I did help a little bit, but I do give him all the credit because he did most of the work. And while I was running around and chasing our two-year-old at the time, he was working his butt off, basically doing labor that most of people choose machinery over. Then we had to have somebody from around here with a fifth wheel hitch transport the camper from the campground to our property. Then that happened next. And then we finally had the camper on the property, which was nice because then we didn't have to go anywhere separate. We could just walk out the front door and start doing stuff on our property instead of having to get in the car and drive 20 minutes down the road to get to our property instead. Then winter time comes, and boy, oh boy, does it snow up here. I'm talking like five feet of snow. Lots of snow, lots of snow. If you don't like snow, this is not the place to go. We then discovered that we have a ravine right behind, really close by behind us. We were able to collect the ravine water and pump it up into our camper and use that for washing dishes and showering and stuff. But we did transport in separate water for drinking just because even though we had filters on everything, we just wanted to be safe until we were able to have the water properly tested. So while the ravine water was a blessing, with it came things like 
the lines freezing and my husband having to go out there pretty much every single morning because it would drop down to like negative 20 was the coldest one morning and he would have to go out and thaw the lines so that we could have water to do dishes and have water to shower so that was quite the trying experience as well was just constantly having to thaw our lines out and be very ooh, that was lightning and be very very conscious with how much water we were using and totally taught us a ton of being conscious with our water. Then in February we got into a rollover accident. We were driving to town and we were going up a hill and there was a patch of ice and there was a car coming from the other direction and we got really scared that we were going to end up hitting the car but the, the truck ended up swerving off the road, turning sideways and then flipping completely um, and landing back on its tires down an embankment that was probably like I don't even know it was a, a big drop and there was like probably five feet of snow and by the grace of God we were able to walk away all three of us were able to walk away scratch free injury free but other than that like it, it was a crazy experience and a true like <laughs> are you alive are you awake are you truly living because anything can happen type of moment after I got over my fear of getting back in the truck and driving in the snow which just always scared me a little bit um, we had to go back down to my mom's to get the rest of our stuff and to get our chickens. So we go down, we get our chickens, we get the rest of our stuff, then we come back up and we have our chickens finally, which was awesome. And then we got more little chickens to add to the bunch. So then fast forward to spring, spring comes and we start to clear more trees and start laying down grass seed in certain areas. And then we built a greenhouse and we started a little garden and we just started to really truly be able to enjoy our property without the snow and without like the, the thick brush of trees because when we got up here it was october and it was already starting to get kind of cold and then november hit and maybe it was like a few weeks after my birthday the first snowfall hit and from then on it was just like all snow so we really didn't truly get to enjoy our property seeing like life grow and seeing things change so spring was probably like my favorite season here so far because everything changed and things things bloomed out of the earth and it was just like a really pretty thing to watch this the property transform from like desolate nakedness and snow to beautiful lush greenery like I've never seen so much bright green in my life I feel like because of that long winter. Towards the end of spring, my little dog Mookie ends up catching Lyme disease. Her legs completely stopped working. We thought she got into something poisonous. We ended up taking her to the vet where they then tested her and said, yes, she tests positive for Lyme disease. So we had to get her treated for that. And now she's back to being normal, but that was crazy because then we learned that um, ticks up here are, there's a very high rate of them carrying Lyme disease. So one of our daily activities after coming inside is to check each other and check the dogs. We have to like do full tick checks every single day. That was something that we really had to learn to just be mindful of and check um, because ticks are just absolutely just, they make my skin crawl. A few months ago, we actually, um, we were trying to weigh out our options because we're like, look, we we want to have our house built but the way that the world is right now it's kind of set us back a little bit nothing ever goes to plan right so we ended up having to think of okay are we going to stay in this camper for another year be right on top of each other because we're, we're outgrowing this place already or are we going to get something bigger so we planned to get something bigger we had a few options are we going to build a can a cabin ourselves are we going to build something like an earth bag home that's maybe a little bit bigger like an earth bag tiny home what are we going to do to to make this work so we ended up finding a cabin company that's um about nine hours away from us in the same state and they are able to custom build a cabin, which is what they've been doing. They've been working on custom building us a cabin. We're able to pick out the color stain on the outside, the roof color, and then the inside is just completely just bare bones naked. So we're able to build that out as we want. From that point to now, we've just been working on clearing our property for the cabin, leveling the land, and 
um, getting it prepared like with sand and crushed concrete. We found out from the cabin company a couple days ago that we will actually be having it delivered like next week. Crazy intense surprise because we have to like really rush to get things done now to be ready for it. All the little amenities, like all of the kitchen appliances can come back in the house that I haven't been able to use. I am just super duper happy to be back and I'm super duper happy to be recording videos again. I'm feeling a little awkward here. I'm like feeling like I forgot where to look and I forgot what to do with my hands. I've grown a lot this year and I am just ready to show you a different part of me and show you a different facets of me because that's what the internet's all about and I feel like my old name kind of limited me to only talking about homemaking related things and I don't want that so I feel like my new channel name it's like it's gonna be it's gonna be good so so I hope to see you next time and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you are new here to my channel sorry about the sound I will get that fixed I promise more thunder. This is only a temporary setup until we get our cabin and then I will start recording on the porch there and inside the cabin there. But for now in the shed I shall stay because there's really no other options for me. If you have any requests for anything that you might want me to talk about in future videos, let me know down below. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave me a lovely comment. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.